Do you want to generate stress and strain data from an Abaku simulation and you're wondering how to do that? This is what I'm going to be talking about in this video using a method that I've called a localization approach. Let's sit back and relax as we get started with this video. So as we start, already I've created the tensile specimen using the ASTM D638 type 1 specimen. This is for plastics and I've already meshed it and the model looks like this. So we've already run the simulation, apply a loading on it and run the simulation. So if we just open the model, so that's basically the simulation. And if we just animate it, so you see everything looks all right. And clearly what one of the challenge a student wants to look here is how can I generate stress and strain data? And there's so many methods to use, but I'm going to be using the localization method. What is that all about? Basically, it requires you to probe regions in the model, at local regions in the model in a localized zone. So like, for example, you can see what's happening here. You can look at what's happening there. You can look at what's happening here. So this local way of imposing extracting stress strain data is a localization method. And so what are we going to do? So basically here, what we're going to start is to create your data. So we're going to use a field output. We didn't have to set any field output before, any history output and then we click continue what this would ask us to do now is okay what variables are we going to look at so because we are loading in the one one directions so i'm looking for the strain in that direction as well as the stress in that direction s11 and then obviously what nodes are we going to be tracking in this problem now so and that's where the element of node comes in but because we're interested in stresses and strain it has to be element based so we're looking for elements and so I'm going to first just move in the middle and track what's happening here. So if I click a dig selection, I can just select somewhere in the middle there. And that becomes, and then save that data. Okay. And so what would that mean? So if we look at the X, Y data, so it shows that those data are there. Now, all we need to do in terms of plotting the stress strain data is go back there and say, I want to operate on this data and use the combined option here. So don't click on the E11, double click on the S11. So basically E11 being the X axis and S11 being the Y axis. And then you can then plot the expression. And instantly we get our stress strain data. Okay, so I can then just rename that. So I'm going to call this case one with S11 versus E11. Okay. So that's how you can get a stress strain data. Please do subscribe if you have not subscribed so that when videos like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. But I thought what will really be exciting here is to investigate a little bit more. For example, where you have variation in the behavior of, of, of the stress in the structure so that you can actually do this localization approach and track different things going on in the model. So if we go back to the model, I created a second case where I have now an existing hole on the sample. So if we look at the same specimen, but there is now a hole on it. It's just a 2.5 millimeter hole just to create a little bit of stress concentration there so that we can go ahead and prove what's going on in the sample. Now we see clearly a simulation that shows stress concentration right in the middle. And this makes it interesting now because you want to extract the stress strain data, but then what's really representative of this material? Is it this region or is that the region of stress concentration on that region and, and that? So but what you can see looking at this is that there is a bit of uniformity of stress values around this region, around that region, away from the stress concentrator. So it seems like there is a consistent behavior in that region and that region. So we're going to probe that and see what we'll get in that case. So we'll go back here and basically we're looking at the field outputs. So the variables that we are looking are already there. The only thing we need to do now is to select a different set of elements. So I'm going to select maybe an element just right here where you've got uniform behavior. It could be here, it could be there. And then we can save that. Okay, so if we save it, then we can operate on that data now to plot our stress strain data using the combined option. So you get E11 and E22, and then you plot the expression, and we've got a result. So I can then rename that and basically call it case 2, again, S11 versus uh, E11. Now, go back, we'll go back to this model. Now, I'm really interested in what's going on around here. So, to what extent is the stress concentration affecting? What will be the stress displacement, stress strain around that region? So, why not let's prove that as part of this localization approach? So, we'll go back to field output. And now, again, what am I looking for? I'm looking at, let's say, this element that is here, which is a very significantly um, high stress density element. And then we can then, so that means we've got it here. So again, we operate on that data as usual. So using the combined option as well. 
So basically we've got E11 and S11 for this second case. And then we we'll plot the expression. So once we plot the expression, it comes with this temporary option. So we we'll rename that. So I'm going to call it case three. I'm going to ask with a stress concentration. Okay, just to differentiate it from the other ones. So we've got three different plots. So what we want to then see is what's really going on with these three different plots. So I'm going to start with the case one. So I'm going to just say plot. So that's my case one. It looks all right. But then let's compare it with case two, which is the region away from the stress concentrator. So I'm going to add it to the plot. So it doesn't show much difference, really. So in the second case, when you've got a stress concentrator, the elastic behavior is the same. The yield is sort of almost the same. I mean, in the final strain, there's a little bit of difference in the final strain. Seems like case two is not deforming as much as case one, but they are comparable in every sense. So the region far away from the stress concentrator seems to be behaving similar where you have got no stress concentrator. Now let's add the case where you've got the hole in the sample. So if you add it, now instantly you get the case two with the stress concentrator and it shows significantly different yield stress, ultimate tensile stress, and also different large, you know, final strain. And, and this is essentially what happens when you've got a stress concentrator. What it tends to do is to magnify the stress the system sees as well as magnify the strain the system is also experiencing. And this is a classic information that you can see right away with this. And so we are able to extract this information because we are probing in a localized manner to see what is going on in this simulation. If you're interested in learning other approaches that I've shown, where I've shown three different distinct approaches for investigating tensile deformation and generating stress strain data from an Abacus model, then look at this video. Thank you and catch you in the next video. Bye-bye. <music>